I've always wanted to do large scale animations with multiple characters. So about three years ago, I took my life savings and I bought myself a Rococo motion capture suit. And this thing has been amazing. It's allowed me to take on new work, massively increase my income, and allow me to work on my own personal animations that I've always wanted to. But since then, motion capture has changed quite dramatically. There's a whole bunch of new AI tools on the market and they're a lot cheaper. So did I waste $5,000 when I could have just been recording on my iPhone? And which tools should you be using? There's a bunch of AI mocap tools available now, including Deep Motion, Move AI One, Quick Magic, Plask, Radical, Rococo's Single Camera Tool, and Rococo's Dual Camera Tool. Now, that's a lot of tools, but after using motion capture professionally for the past three years, I've learned that there's three features that you really want. Otherwise, you could spend hours cleaning up your mocap data. One, foot locking. This is a filtering process that some tools offer. When the software detects that the feet are on the ground, it locks them in place to prevent them slipping around. Two, finger tracking. When I first got my suit, I realized very quickly that a character with stiff, inanimate hands feels like a robot. However, a character with even a little bit of finger movement feels like a living, breathing creature. This is because human beings don't just talk with our mouths, but with our entire bodies. And hand and finger movement is a really big part of that. My Greek brothers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Three, hand placement. This one is the easiest to clean up later, but the worse it is, the longer it takes to clean. This simply refers to when your hands interact with other objects or your own body. A simple way to test this is to touch your head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and see how closely the mocap data matches. Okay, now you're all mocap experts, let's take these seven AI tools and toss out the ones that don't have these features. Move AI and Radical don't offer foot locking. As you can see, the feet in both Move AI and Radical can float either above or below the ground. This can be cleaned up later, but if other tools can do this automatically for us, why should we do all of that extra manual work? Plask does offer foot locking as well as finger tracking. Unfortunately, Plask has two different algorithms and one can do foot locking while the other can do finger tracking. Currently, you can't get both in the same pass. Now the team at Plask did reach out to me while I was making this video and apparently finger tracking and foot locking is planned to be bundled together in the future, hopefully within the next month or so. They're also planning on some facial tracking features which should go live in about two weeks. So if you're watching this video in the future, maybe give Plask another go. I actually thought that their tracking data was quite good and the only reason it didn't make today's cut was because the data isn't combined. The Rococo single camera actually gave me the worst results of all of these tools, which is kind of awkward because Rococo is totally sponsoring this video. Sorry. It really seems to struggle with depth, so although these motions do look pretty decent from the front, from the side, you can see that the character's hands are quite a long way from touching the head shoulders, knees, or toes. The single camera has great foot locking, but unfortunately no finger tracking. Now out of all of these tools, Rococo's single camera is the only one that is truly free. Although all of the other tools have some sort of trial period, they will require you to pay something if you plan on using the tools continuously. Rococo's single camera tool is free without restrictions. So if free is your most important factor, you may want to consider going with this one. Just be aware that it does require the most cleanup work. I did also briefly check out free mocap, but it requires multiple cameras, there's a lengthy calibration process, and it even requires a little bit of Python programming. If none of that scares you, I encourage you to check out free mocap because it did look like it gave quite nice results and free is hard to pass up. However, for this tutorial, I concluded it was a little more complicated than the average person would be willing to go through. That leaves us with three AI tools to do some more advanced testing with. We've still got Deep Motion, Quick Magic, Rococo's Dual Camera Tool, and of course, I'll be comparing all of these to the results that I can get from my $5,000 Rococo suit to see just how much money I've wasted. Oh God. Here we go. I've come up with five simple tests to see just how good these AI tools really are. We'll be testing for hand placement, so that's the head, shoulders, knees, and toes, Jumping with both feet off the ground, so we'll just do some jumping jacks. Finger tracking. For this I'll make a few common hand gestures. Occluding, that's when objects block the camera. For that we'll just simply walk behind a chair. Quadruped movement, that is walking on all fours. So I'm going to be walking like a gorilla Planet of the Apes style. Watch out Andy Circus. An actual animation piece combining all of these. And finally it's not all about quality, so we're going to be looking at how much these tools cost. 
For all of these video capture techniques, you ideally want a relatively clean background with good contrast between the background, the floor, and the actor. You don't want any baggy clothing to get in the way of the tracking, so preferably wear something relatively tight. Because I want to try and do a direct comparison between the AI tools and the suit, I'm going to record all of them at the same time. Fortunately, the suit is quite tight already, and the black suit with the white background should give us some good contrast. My only concern is the gloves obscuring the fingers while tracking, but I did some testing earlier and it looks like the AI can handle it quite nicely, despite having slightly chunky fingers. I'm pretty sure Rococo wanted to sponsor this video because they wanted me to talk about their indie bundles. Now, throughout this video I've referred to my $5,000 suit, which at the time I purchased it is what it cost me in Australian dollars. However, the indie bundle does come with quite a significant discount, which works out to $2,695 US dollars, or just a little bit over $4,000 Australian dollars. That's roughly a $1,000 saving, which frankly I'm a little jealous wasn't available when I purchased mine. The Indie Bundle includes the suit and the gloves, as well as a copy of the Studio software, which is what I have. There's also a Pro version, which comes with their head rig, and that'll set you back an extra $300 US. To be eligible for these Indie Bundles, you need to have less than three people working in your company, and be making less than $100,000 US dollars per year. Now, technically, I would still qualify for this, and I imagine most of you will too. Now you know about the Indie Bundles, and I've met my sponsorship obligations. However, the real question is, how is our suit going to compare to our new AI-captured data? And am I going to be asking Rococo for a refund? The hand placement for deep motion is reasonable, at least until he leans over and the arms start to obscure the rest of the body, which messes up both the arms and legs. The video didn't do a great job of picking up the fingers, and he doesn't quite lean over enough to touch his toes. For quick magic, the hand placement is really good. The knees do go sideways when the arms occlude the legs. The finger tracking is surprisingly good, although the wrist does spasm out a couple of times. With dual cam, the hand placement is pretty good, although it has no finger tracking. The feet do shift slightly when the hands occlude the feet. For the Rococo suit, it clearly gives the best performance. There's no issues with popping or bad tracking. The hand placement is slightly off from the head, knees and toes, but this is very easy to clean up afterwards. All the tools performed quite well while doing the jumping jacks. Deep motion does feel a little stiff as there's only a little bit of knee bend. One hand does also flip out at the beginning, but generally this is pretty good. Quick magic works extremely well. Good foot locking, good sense of weight, the fingers appear to be tracked quite well. From the side you can see that he does hop backwards with each jump, but this wouldn't be too hard to fix later. The dual cam probably performs worst in this test. You can see that the jumps kind of pop left and right slightly, and from side on he hops forward over time. The suit gave a great performance here, which I was a little surprised at. Generally speaking, the suit doesn't like it when both feet are off the ground and it can cause issues. In this test though, zero issues. Rococo's dual camera doesn't track fingers, so unfortunately it gets a big fat zero score in this test. Deep Motion did an okay job. It tracked the pointer and the middle fingers really well, but struggled with the others. And it completely fails at doing a thumbs up. I've been really impressed with Quick Magic's finger tracking. It regularly does a great job, and it's not far off the Rococo's gloves. That said, both AIs failed miserably at doing the thumbs up. I don't know why the AI doesn't want to give me the thumbs up, but at least it's happy to give me the peace sign. The suit, on the other hand, does a great job on all of these movements. The occlusion test was very hard for the AI tools, and this isn't really surprising. They need to be able to see the body to record data, and it's quite obvious they aren't able to compensate if that data is hidden from them. Deep motion performed quite poorly, even just standing side on seemed tricky for it. The wrists break, and then when the actor goes behind the chair, the feet slip quite a lot. This could probably just be fixed afterwards, but it would require a lot of work. Quick Magic looks better and seems quite happy to walk side onto the camera. However, you can see when he goes past the chair, he all but stops his forward movement, almost preventing him from taking a step. This would be very hard to clean up. Thanks to its second camera, still seeing some of the data, the dual camera does perform better, but it too jitters as it goes past the chair. The suit doesn't even know that the chair is there, so it has zero issues with it. Quadruped is by far the hardest of these tests, and quite frankly it felt a little unfair to even try. I've done quadruped movement with the suit before, and even it tends to struggle. But I really wanted to see if this was something that the AI might excel at, and the answer is... No. No, they don't. Deep motion would require a lot of cleanup to fix this, and it might not even be salvageable. Quick Magic actually did a surprisingly good job here. If you fix this one knee that keeps popping and made the hands into knuckles when they're on the ground, this could actually be usable. 
The dual camera is okay. There's a little bit of foot cleanup needed at the start, and unfortunately it does seem to have mostly missed the chest thumps at the end. I was extremely impressed with how well the suit handled the gorilla walk. Usually it struggles with movements that require both hands to be on the ground, but this is a near perfect take. I'll see you in the next Planet of the Apes installment. Deep Motion really struggles with the occlusion on this take. The hands and the gun covering parts of the body throw it off, and even though I took the cloth off the chair for this take, even that small amount of occlusion gives it issues. Again, Quick Magic performs surprisingly well here, the hand placement of the gun is actually quite good. The chair occlusion doesn't seem to upset it too much, placing my hands over my head at the very end is the only serious issue here. The dual camera performs okay here, but the arms are off for most of the take. Not sure if this was the gun, the chair, or the general body occlusion upsetting it here. The suit looks great here, fingers and hand tracking look very accurate. The only thing I can maybe fault it for is the hands covering the head at the end. The neck doesn't look like it bends down quite far enough, but this could easily be fixed with a single keyframe during cleanup. So, am I asking Rococo for a refund? Look, let's not beat around the bush here. The suit absolutely walloped the AI tools. It's not even close. It performed better on literally every single test. If you have the budget for it, I would go with a suit. The time and the frustration that it will save you in cleanup later on is more than worth the price. Now that said, if you really want to go with one of these AI tools, I would recommend Quick Magic. It has all the features that you want, and it generally performed the best across the board. It also has the added bonus of being the cheapest. Now it's a little difficult to compare the prices of some of these AI tools. They all have some sort of credit system, and they have different tiering. Frankly, it's annoying. However, if we were to compare the largest packages, Quick Magic costs $203 for an annual subscription, and they give you enough credits that that works out to be about 480 shots. Deep Motion gives you unlimited shots, but they cost $996 per year. Now, if you compare that to a suit, the cost is actually not that different. In fact, after about two and a half years, the suit actually becomes the cheaper option. It is worth considering that some of these AI tools, such as Deep Motion, do have the ability to record multiple people in one take. Now, if you were to try and do that in a suit, you would need multiple suits, and the cost of that would add up very quickly. Another advantage of video is that you don't have to do these performances yourself. You can theoretically capture from any video, allowing you to get performances that you may not physically be able to do yourself. On the suit side of things, you get instant feedback and you don't have to wait for video processing. Although Quick Magic did give good results, it did take several hours for these tests to process. And if your internet or their websites go down, you lose access to these browser-based AI tools. A suit, on the other hand, just keeps running. And finally, a suit gives you access to either a very large or a very small stage. You could record in a ballroom or you could record in your broom closet and the suit doesn't care. The only real limitation is how far your Wi-Fi can reach and I've never reached the edge of mine. For the AI tools, you actually need a relatively large space so that the cameras can capture your entire body. Now, I have a relatively large lounge room, which is great for this kind of a setup, but particularly with the dual camera setup, I only just had enough room. So which of these tools is going to be best for you? Well, if you want high quality animation and minimal cleanup work afterwards, a suit really is a fantastic investment. I certainly don't regret buying mine. That said, these AI tools aren't too far behind, and as long as you don't mind doing some of that additional annoying cleanup work, then on average they should end up being just that little bit cheaper. My advice would be to try out each of these tools and then slowly build your way up to the more expensive ones. Now for me personally, that involved grabbing some free motion capture from Mixamo. I then bought some slightly more high quality animation from MoCap Online, and then I decided to try out some of the AI tools. And then when I had decided that I wanted to incorporate motion capture into my pipeline permanently, I went and bought myself the Rococo suit so that I could save time on all that cleanup. This whole process took me about two years to work through, and the whole time I was also learning facial motion capture. So if you're interested in seeing a comparison between some of the best facial capture tools out there, jump into this next video.